Shalom, it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shelley Village and today I'm shooting this video to share our grade six summation. So if you remember my video from a year ago, I shared our African American literature journal for grade six as well as, I believe it's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, oh no, 12, as well as our 12 books slash novels that we were going to read for grade six and now I'm back at the end of grade six to kind of give you a little summary of what we read, how we liked it, what we did and I have my son here with me so you can get his opinion directly. Say hi. Shalom. Okay so let's get started. Um, the first book that we read last year was As Brave As You by Jason Reynolds. I was very excited to introduce Jason Reynolds um, to my son this past school year. And y'all see how thick this book is? It was thick. And so I knew this would be um, a challenge for him lengthwise. Um, by, the, by the time we started reading this book, the longest book he read was Gentle Ben. And it was like 280 something pages. And so I think this is like four. I'm not sure. It was, a, it was a long book, like 410 or something like that. And he was like, wow, this book is long. <laughs> but I, And I chose it first so that we could just get it done and get it out of the way. So you want to tell them what you liked about that, what you didn't like about it, your overall opinion of the book? Sure. So, um, so basically what I liked about this book was I liked the relationship between Ernie and his brother, Jeannie. Um, every time that they would go through something, they were always in it together. Not, neither of them had to suffer alone. When they suffer, they would suffer in the whole book. Most, some of the time, when they had to um, scoop poop and did it, and they had to do everything that their grandpa told them when their mom and dad were away. Okay, yeah. So the book starts off with um, a husband and wife couple and their two sons. And the sons are sent down south. They live in New York. The sons are sent down south to Virginia um, to kind of hang out with their grandparents while their parents take a trip to, I believe, Jamaica. And they're trying to work on their marriage. So you have these two city boys who are having to do the summer in the south and all of the, you know, chores that come with um, raising food and keeping animals and just a very, very different lifestyle from New York to Virginia so I don't know suffering might have been a strong word but definitely they had to endure things that they weren't used to and in some cases didn't want to and they were a good brother team in that way yes yes okay so was there anything that you didn't like about it or anything that you really really liked or that you really really remember that left an impression on you um not really I do know that Ernie um I noticed a difference between them which was well, a major difference is Ernie always looked yeah Ernie always looked at everything negatively in a negative way and Jeannie tended to look at look at everything in a positive way whatever they would do that they didn't like Jeannie was always making a game out of it or having fun with it and Ernie on the other hand um, didn't really care about it too much and Ernie was the oldest so maybe a little birth order goes into that. Okay, so this is as brave as you, Jason Reynolds. Jason Reynolds is one of my personal um, favorite authors, and I wanted to introduce him to my son this year. What did we do for As Brave as You? I think we ended up writing a newspaper. Um, no, you did the questions. Yeah, that was ghost. You did questions. So, um, in the book, the one of the main characters, or the main character, right? Jeannie, he writes, he keeps up with all of these questions. Matter of fact, let me give you an example of that. And let me grab the book here again. He always has, like for example in chapter 2, look, and in chapter 2 he's already at four, question 441. What made Grandpa blind? I bet it was the bright sun. He has all these questions. Um, what does blindness feel like? Is it just blackness? You know, a series of questions about whatever is going on. So I had him, after each chapter, write his own set of questions about his own life and about the story. So that's what he did for um, that novel. Okay, and then we read Island of the Blue Dolphin by Scott O'Dell. A classic, pretty much 
every um, the homeschool community is familiar with. You want to talk a little bit about that one? Sure. So this one I really felt like I could relate to because I like to be by myself most of the time. I like to be in a remote place where I can just chill with animals and nature. And so her life was very similar to how I would want my life to be in the future. But then things started happening in her village and she was, they were, her village was attacked several times and so she didn't have that beautiful environment to live in. All she saw after a while was smoke and dust and fire and chaos and so it was a really hard time for her to experience that but after her father, which was the general slash chief, um, he, they were able to fight back and they got their island back. Their island back. Yeah, okay, so we're pretty much familiar with um, Island Blue Diamonds. I, I love this book. Yes. Um, and I knew that he would like it. I knew he would like like the survival theme and the ocean animals and being in the water and kind of off in a remote place, like kind of what he hinted at. Um, what we ended up doing with this book, I was looking for, but I think I've already pulled it out for his um, portfolio. He made a, um, like a flip book, right? And it focused focused on characterization and he also made his own like sea slash nature type dictionary um, from some of the cultural words and like marine biology type words that were specific to this novel so that was Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell um, that was our second read next we read um, a gift from childhood memories of an African boyhood by Baba. That's what it looks like. Um, you want to talk a little bit about this one? I think I think you like this one. We have a a thing where um, I'm like, oh, I really think you like this book, and no, nah, not really. And then as he starts reading the book, at some point, he's like, okay, mom, yes, I really do like well, it. I won't. No. <laughs> you like this one though, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, the main thing I liked about this book was the formatting. Each After each uh, paragraph, basically there would be a little spark to divide up the paragraphs. Um, and oh, I, yeah, let me yeah. Go ahead, keep talking. And I thought that that was really cool. I like the illustrations. It was a different type of African art, and so that was cool to see in the book, because you don't really see that a lot in books like this. And so I just thought that that was really creative. And basically just overall the uh, book. Let me book. show you. Didn't mean to cut you off, sorry. Mm -hmm. So it has like, you know, how they have the breaks. Um, there's some of the African art there. And then they have color and black and white illustrations. I know, me too. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so there's another illustration. So I liked it when I was looking for um, books that were set in Africa. And I came across this one. I knew he would like it. Um, and then what do we do for this one? Oh, he created um, his own story. It was a little mini booklet where he talked about how his life was similar or different, kind of, yeah, from Baba's life before we had like some literary notes to do some pre, excuse me, to do some pre-writing or some thinking. You want to, and he kind of compared and contrast um, his life to Baba's life. So they're both. Um, black boys of African descent, of course, Baba is actually being raised on the continent. Um, and we talked about how your life different being in America versus being on the continent and uh, what that looks like, even though Baba eventually got to America. Yes? So I would say, let's read what you have in green and this one here on the pink line. Okay, so I wrote here. Yeah. Baba eats catfish. He also owns a rice farm. I don't eat unclean fish and I have a small garden. Baba fishes with his hands and I fish with rods. <laughs> right, and then read this one. I see my mother every day, unlike Baba who sees her occasionally. Right, so he was, after each chapter, he was kind of writing out either the similarities or the differences between um, the, their two lifestyles. Okay, and that was the gift from childhood. The fourth book we read was another... Jason Reynolds book um, and it was called Ghost. 
Okay, and I think we finished this in the first semester, too. I think we got done with both of those. So, you want to tell them what you liked about Ghost, what you didn't? Um, so, actually, this book, I had a couple more things that I didn't like about it than I did. I liked the characters in the book, and I liked the setting. But as far as the layout and how the book, how the characters acted and how when each one of them would start something, how they resolved it, I didn't I didn't really have too much of a feel for. So the plot. Right. Okay. So you wanna talk a little bit about I like this book. So um It wasn't it really, wasn't his favorite. Yeah, it wasn't entertaining. It was just the words, I guess. Um well all the books are words. So what do you it wasn't entertaining. When I read it, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, okay, so I got that. It was just like, yeah. Just like that. Okay, I liked it. Um, I thought we would read the whole series, but he wasn't a major fan um, of this. And there were pieces of it that he liked, but overall, it wasn't his favorite. So, do you have a specific example, like in the I mean, the book? Like, I love the, the, the um, track coach. I like the relationship that he was developing with Ghost and what that meant. I like how where um, where Ghost was from, which was, I don't know, it wasn't quite inner city. I didn't get that feel, but it wasn't like the well-to-do suburbs. Um, so he was definitely, he lived in a single-parent household with just his mom. Mm -hmm. um, his dad was, you know, a little out there. Um, he didn't really see him a lot or whatnot, so he developed a relationship with the coach. And it really got a chance for him to see that, like, black boys can do something other than play basketball or even football, even though this book makes more of a case for basketball. And so he began to learn that his speed and agility and all of that, it was better suited for running track than playing ball. And I liked how the plot developed in telling that story. You have anything you wanted to add about this? This For this book... Um, we wrote an article. He had to, I forgot exactly what the directions were, but I know you had to, um, oh yeah, choose an event in the book where you were the newspaper reporter and you had to write an article um, about that event in the book. Yeah, you did a really good job on that, on that too. So that was Ghost, Jason Reynolds. Okay, what else did we read? Our fifth book was The Watsons Go to Birmingham. By Christopher Paul Curtis, 1963. All right, you want to talk a little bit about that one? Sure. So, um, about this book. Let's see. So, I actually saw the movie before I read this book. Which is a no-no in this house. Right. But you, sh you showed me the movie before. We read I didn't show you the movie. He saw the movie before, which that shouldn't happen. That happened, actually happened twice this year. You'll find out about that in another book a little later in this video. But I really wanted him um, to read this book, so I made him read it um, anyways. Normally, if he's already seen the movie, I just can the book, but we stuck with this one. Go ahead. So, I definitely liked the book better than the movie, and that's because <laughs> the book had a few more scenes, I guess I should say. It had more to give than the movie. The movie yes. was The movie was shorter than the book, and... It can go in and out. Some books will be um, shorter than the movie. Some movies will be shorter than the book. But the book was definitely better. Um, it did have a weird feel feel to it. The chapters um, had like very specific names. It wasn't. It's not an ordinary book, and so that's kind of what I liked about it. Um, they had lots of new words that I didn't knew that they introduced that that I didn't know that. Um, were introduced in this book, so I learned and picked up a lot of vocabulary from this book, and so yeah. Yeah, you did, especially like southern vocabulary. Like I was just looking. Um, I remember hillbilly. Um, there was another one that stuck out to me too. I can't find it at this moment. Um, that you were like, "Mom, what's that?" But yeah, this had a lot of. Like, you know, cultural vocabulary that would be indicative to the South. That even though he's being raised in the South, he still was just like, what's that? And obviously, the majority of that is the time difference. Right? So, yeah, I like this book, too. I like the book. 
Um, I like the movie. I like the book better than the movie as well. For this particular book, he had a traditional um, novel guide that was a little challenging. He, he, he made a couple of complaints throughout um, the guide, and I just told him to push through and stick with it. And he did. It wasn't anything he couldn't do. It was just quite um, the challenge for him. I was, yeah, I know you don't. He doesn't like to have to write in small spaces, and the spaces were small. I, I got the um, guide off of TBT. I think I ended up, I'll take it. I think I ended up making a note to them there. But he did really good with um, the themes and the character analysis. I was, um, here's one. It says, choose one character trait to describe each character below. He chose troublesome for a Byron and um, just talked a little bit about why he was, uh, Byron was a troublesome boy. Yeah, just talked a little bit about why he was, you know, not together. Okay, so that was the Watsons Go to Birmingham by Christopher Paul Curtis. We enjoyed that. What was next? The Jacob Ladder. I love this book. He did too. Okay, so this is the Jacob Ladder um, by Gerald Houseman and Utan. I believe I'm saying his name right. Utan or Utan Hines. Looks like this. Okay, I'll let you speak about that. Okay, so this book I liked a lot. Um, first of all, because I didn't know a lot about Jamaica before I read this book, so it was a new experience, a new culture for me when I read this book. I also like um, how in a lot of books their characters will be briefly explained and then the whole plot will be um, the big thing, but in this book they really explained the characters so that when they did certain things you could relate to, oh yeah, he does, he acts like that, so that would make sense for him to do that and connect to other people in that way and so that was a major thing in this book for me yeah this um we studied latin america the caribbean islands this past school year so it was important to me that um a good bit of his novels that he was reading would be set in that place or speak to their culture in some way and obviously they did so we got to this book he was like ah oh, jamaica you know putting certain things together and then we ended up um doing a comparison between because this book is set in the 1960s too so we did a comparison between 1960s in america and 1960s in jamaica yeah we kind of did some similarities and differences here and you know where would you have wanted to grow up at in 1960s jamaica or america of course it was all like jamaica and it, it's not that the, um the island didn't have its ills it definitely spoke about that in the book right with the there was um what was the lady? She wasn't a like a witch doctor or something like that. The lady who put the root on her on his father, um, and then his father was you know a, like the town drunk. So it definitely had its own ills, but it was nowhere near what was going on <laughs> in Watson's goes to Birmingham. Um, no, I already put it away in your portfolio. I was just getting ready to tell you guys that um, what he did for this book was he made a cereal box. Where you list like the ingredients and you design a front cover. And I've already put his stuff away. So he was asking could he show that. But we don't have it. Um, but I know I shared it on social media like months back when he actually did it. He did a really good job. We're actually going to do another serial um, book box report um, next year for a book that he's going to read as well. Okay, so that was The Jacob Ladder. The next, let's see, where are we at in our rotation? Um, Garvey's Choice. Okay, I don't have Garvey's Choice. We rented that from the library, so I will um, upload an image here for you to see. Garvey's Choice is by Nikki Grimes, mm -hmm. and it was a little different because this book was written in lyricism or lyric poetry and not prose. So... We like Nikki Grimes here anyways, but you want to tell them what you so thought about that this book? This came very close, maybe even first place, to my favorite book <laughs> that I read this year. Um, mainly because the author described, and through lyricism, through rhymes, and some of them weren't rhyming, but some of the stanzas were, and so she explained how the characters felt with the short synopsis that... When you read it, you won't really understand what it is at that time. If you keep going back and reading it more and more, you'll 
see how each time you read it again, you pick up something new. And so that was um, that was uh, my first time experiencing something like that in a book. And because the, the it was so quick, he was able to reread it, you know, over and over. And so it's kind of like the snowball effect. You gather more and you keep going. And Nikki Grimes is just amazing like that. Um, we did a typical, like, book talk where we have um, discussion questions that I ask him or sometimes he reads them and writes down um, the responses. So um, I really like that book. And one of the reasons that I chose it is because Garvey isn't a typical um, black boy, right? He's not, like, into um, video games and sports and things like that. And so um, I thought that my son could identify that identify with that, excuse me, because he tends to be interested into things that are not in the, you know, standard sports, video games kind of thing. And so he did connect with the Guardian that way, which is what I was looking for in choosing that book. So I was happy as a mama. Okay, after Garvey's Choice, wow, how far down are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our eighth book was Bob Marley by Gary Steckles. So we chose the um, Bob Marley biography in the Caribbean Lives series. So we're actually, what I had him do was to write a biographical essay on Bob Marley, and we're going to do a separate video about that. So I don't want to speak too much about it because I want that to be its own thing. But I mean, you guys know the life of Bob Marley. That's pretty much what it was. Okay, next was The K by Theodore Taylor. Um, I chose... This book, because it's set in the islands, I believe it's set in Curacao, if I'm mm -hmm. not familiar, um, if I'm not mistaken, excuse me. So, um, this was the last one that you read. Yes, yeah, so and then I'm going to move to the next um, list over here in a minute. So, you want to talk a little bit about this, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Um, Philip and Timothy, right, if so I remember correctly. One thing that... Um, Look at the camera. Yeah, sorry. Um... So basically what I liked about the, what I didn't like about the K was, um, so Timothy and Philip were sh castaways because they shipwrecked on an island and Timothy was very nice and caring and protective, protective over Philip and Philip just basically was like, whatever, I don't care. And he was very rude to Philip. I mean, yeah, he was very rude to Timothy and Timothy responded in a way that wasn't very mature for his age. So those were the nine novels that he just read independently, that my son read independently. And now we're down to the last three, because I told you at the beginning, I had 12 listed. So um, I did not know it, but um, my son had seen the movie to C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So I didn't know that when I scheduled the book read or I wouldn't have scheduled it so we tossed it I didn't make him read it because he'd already seen the movie so there goes that um the next one is A Taste of Honey short stories by Jabari Asim looks like this I am loving this but the reason that I'm not going to share too much of it in this video is because I am I loved it so much um well, first, let me start here. I ended up dividing the short stories. I believe there are 18 of them. And so I divided the short stories up um, to six for grade six, six for grade seven, six for grade eight. And this was intended to be a read aloud. So he's not reading this by himself. I'm reading the stories out loud to him, and then we're conversing about them. I will um, put the link to my grade six um, African-American Literature Journal video. Um, in the description box below and so you can hear me talk about why I chose it and all that first and now a year later that I've read it to him I'm going to do a separate video about it because I want to talk a little bit more about the culture that it has and I want to talk a little bit more about the language and some of the things that I think parents need to kind of know about before they decide to read this but to really tell you to read it to your kid um, so wait for that video later in the summer and then last was Tales from Shakespeare by Tina Packer. Um, we read, again, with this one, I knew I was going to use a grade 6, 7, and 8, just like the book before. And so I chose three of Shakespeare plays to read this um, in grade 6. And I'm also going to do a separate video on that, too, because I want to talk a little bit more about what we read and how he responded to it and 
kind of what I would do differently like that. And so I want it to be a separate um, video. But that is the sum total of what we read for the 2017-2018 school year in grade 6. We were able to successfully get through 11 of those books because I, I ditched one. Um, and we had a good time. All in all, it was a good year um, for literature. Um, he learns a lot. His writing skills definitely increased as we went book to book to book. Um, and he had some favorites that kind of oh, surprised me, especially Shakespeare. And he had some things that he didn't like that I was like, man, I thought you would have liked that. So I just um, grew as well as an educator in terms of choosing this for him and what he would like and what he wouldn't like and all of that. So all in all, how would you give grade six, um, how would you rank grade six lit like thumbs up kind of up and in the middle or thumbs down no it's not thumbs down but um all in all how would you rank sixth grade literature class um i would give thumbs up thumbs up i would too we had a good time for the most part all right let me know if you have any questions i hope this video has been helpful for you um, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom. Shalom.